Hey, what's happening, everybody? Jay Shocklast here, and apologies uh, for the messed up audio in the first video, but we're going to do this all over again. Uh, thank you for being so patient. This is the 10 most powerful characters in the Marvel Universe. I am Jay Shocklast. And I am Sasquatch. And uh, we are going to go ahead and just jump right into it, uh, since you may have already heard some of this, but uh, obviously the audio is fixed this time. And uh, we're going to go ahead and have some fun. Uh, as we mentioned before, we are leaving out all of the uh, Celestials celestials, and uh, all that good stuff. Um, you know, if you know what I mean. Uh, all these, you know, unknown characters that kind of just pop up whenever there's big events and stuff like that. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and leave those guys out because, quite frankly... They would fill out the entire list. Yeah, exactly. And, and who knows any of these guys? Uh, what we are going to focus on are some more key characters uh, that are more important to bigger storylines and uh, that a lot of people should know and, and understand. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, start off by breaking that rule right away, as we did before. Uh, the one of them all that we uh, we do have to kind of pay some respect to as an uh, honorable mention would be the one above all who uh, has been rumored to be Stanley himself. Uh, so yeah, I guess he could technically be number one, wouldn't you say? Yeah, because he's pretty much created characters that have lasted that could last centuries. Yeah, so I mean, uh, the one above all, you know, he's supposed to be the one who created the entire universe and all that jazz, and uh, obviously that kind of plays in line with Stanley. Um, they've always said that Stanley was supposed to be the one above all. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and mention him, but he's not on the list. Safe uh, to say, Stanley is a god. I would say that is safe to say. He is God or is a God? Uh, I mean, in that universe, I guess he would be God. He's got the white beard. So there we go. Uh, in any event, let's go ahead and kick things off, man. Number 10, who you got? I've got Mephisto. And uh, why do you say Mephisto? Um, basically, he's the Marvel version of the devil. He's the main incarnate that everybody that makes a deal with is every time you see they they want to make a deal. With the devil, he's the one that pops up, and he's certainly been there for a lot of key uh, moments. Um, specifically, I could point out Spider-Man with the story of One More Day, in which it turned into Brand New Day, which was a big event for Spider-Man before they decided to do the current run that they're doing. So that's my pick, number 10, is Mephisto. All right, well, my pick for number 10 is a bit of a homer pick, if you will. Uh, you know, I try to, with my list in general, stay away from, you know, my favorite characters. But obviously, uh, some of my favorite characters are just badasses. What can I say? Uh, so for pick number 10, I am going with Deadpool. And, you know, you wouldn't think of Deadpool as being, you know, on this list if you think about it. Because he doesn't have any, you know, special powers other than his healing factor and stuff like that. And his big mouth. Yeah, and his big mouth. Um, I mean, he doesn't have, like, he doesn't shoot lasers from his cock and stuff like that. But, uh... All right, his that... dream is does. <laughs> it, was, it was supposed to be funny. Uh, anyway, he doesn't do anything like that. But, I mean, for what it's worth, Deadpool has had a major role in uh, some pretty serious events uh, throughout the time, um, you know, Marvel Universe since he's... Uh, been around, um, you know, obviously he's, uh, you know, got that healing factor. It's pretty much almost impossible to kill him. Um, I mean, he's tried to kill himself. Uh, you know, like Thanos, he's got an infatuation with death. Um, he's definitely had many a conversation with her. Um, he also, you know, one big one that I've, uh, I've always, you know, thought about is, uh, the secret invasion. With the scrolls, uh, he was tasked by uh, Nick Fury to uh, take out the the Scroll Queen. Well, actually, he was tasked to find out how to kill the Scroll Queen. Gotcha. And, and uh, he ended up finding a way and doing it. Not only did he find a way, he killed the Scroll Queen. Um, and unfortunately, uh, Norman Osborn took the credit, and that was the beginning of the end uh, for uh, Iron Man as the director of Shield. And, um, or what was he, the Secretary of Defense? Wait till Something, like that. Something like that. Um, he was pretty much the guy in charge. Yeah, and uh, Norman Osborn basically uh, took all the credit um, because Deadpool, 
you know, even though he killed the queen, he kind of did it in his own Deadpool kind of way. Uh, he is a bit of a screw out, uh, screw up, I should say. Um, so, <laughs> but you know, he's always got a hand at something. Um, and what, you know, one of the big parts of that story that I remember very, very distinctly that I loved was, uh, you know, Bullseye was Hawk, Hawkeye at that point. Uh, the dark Hawkeye as part of dark rain and, you know, Deadpool was promised a, a, quite a sum of money for taking out the, the scroll queen. And, uh, you know, he was going after Norman Osborn to try to get it. And Norman Osborn just finally was like, you know what, enough, just get rid of this guy. Um, you know, sent Bullseye after him. And, uh, you know, Bullseye is, you know, pretty much as tough as they come. He's probably one of the biggest and deadliest assassins out there. Yeah, and uh, Deadpool just totally handed him his ass so badly that, you know, ha uh, Bullseye actually went to his own bank took money out of his own personal account and paid off Deadpool. So, uh, yeah, Deadpool's pretty much uh, up there. I mean, he's had a lot of things. I mean, remember Thorpool when he actually, like, lifted Mjolnir? And had the power of Thor. Had the power of Thor. I mean, there's been a lot of crazy things that he's done over time. Um, so he's got his Deadpool corpse. He's, you know, I think he's taken out. He killed the entire Marvel Universe as part of a storyline. Um I think he was, uh, he's been involved in some pretty serious, uh, storylines. So Deadpool's my guy at number 10. Uh, that moves us on to number nine and who you got, man. And yeah, number nine, I'm going to definitely go with one of my favorites. Um, it's, I'm going to pick Iceman. And the reason why is he is, um, he is considered what is a Omega level mutant and Omega level mutants are supposed to be the highest power rating mutants out there in the um in the marvel universe um pretty much the, the biggest the couple big ones that would be considered on that list would be g gray professor x um a lot of them are telepaths and iceman still is one of like a couple different characters that have omega level powers that are on that list and the reason why i says that say that is because he is almost unkillable as well I mean, he'll probably end up dying of, like, old age or something like that. Um, or he could live forever. But um, as long as there's water and moisture in this world, he uh, pretty much can't die. As long as he stays in his ice form, he can he can be shattered into a million pieces and then reform, you know, just by drawing water out. He, can, he doesn't even have to use his powers. He can just use his mind and freeze your lungs. You know, he's pretty much, he could be a, a very powerful character but um and we've seen that we've seen all this happening when other telepaths have taken over his mind and we've seen them use the power that he should be using but because he's such a class clown and a and a joker that he kind of just does the bare minimum so that's why i'm leaving him at number nine uh, mainly because until he kind of like gets his shit together um you know, he's kind of going to be like a bare minimum guy, but he has the potential to be a very dangerous threat. Yeah, I mean, I, I really honestly never thought about Iceman that way. Um, I always think of him as a bit of a screwball kid, but, you know, hey, um, that's I mean, some interesting... You, you bring up some interesting points. I mean, look at the big story arc, and you know it's my favorite. It's uh, The Age of Apocalypse. Right. Um... Without Professor, without Professor X there, he had Magneto to train him. Magneto's kind of like, you know, he pushes you to your full extent. So he pushed every mutant that he had to their full powers, and Iceman became kind of a <coughs> cold-hearted prick in a way. And he was able to travel from North America to Europe in a matter of, like, minutes by traveling through the ocean. Wow. You know, he could just jump right in the water and zip through with light speed so like i said he has untapped powers but he's really not using his full potential perfect well for number nine for me it's another character that probably gets on my list because uh he is a favorite of mine but i think it is very well deserved uh for number nine i have richard Ryder, aka nova nova prime uh the nova not sam alexander uh sam alexander would be nowhere near this list um, you know, I, I could put a bed up before. I, I could punch you in the mouth from right here. So, 
uh, <laughs> in any event, uh, Nova as Rich Rider is, um, you know, he's been through a lot. He's done a lot. Um, he's presumed dead at the moment, uh, which, you know, let's think about it. Uh, he died with Star-Lord. Star-Lord's back. He died with Thanos. Thanos is back. Um, and also during the whole storyline, uh, Black Bolt died in Black Bolt's back. All three of them are back on, like, with no backstory whatsoever. So I have a feeling we'll see Richard Ryder again soon. Uh, let's, like, break down what Rich Richie has done in the last few years. You know, first of all, he stopped the Annihilation Wave, um, like, almost single-handedly. You know, that in and of itself kind of shows him at his prime. Um, it shows him actually go from just being some kid from the New Warriors to, you know, a Green Lantern-level character. You know, that is essentially what the Nova Corps is, you know, the Marvel's Green Lanterns. And, um, you know, that was kind of his Hal Jordan moment, if you will. Um, the Annihilation, you kind of saw him come of age. Uh, he led that war. I mean, the galaxy was, you know, on the brink of uh, being taken over by the Annihilation Wave. And uh, he kills Annihilus. Um, so, yeah, that was a pretty huge story for him. And it didn't stop there. It went right on to Realm of Kings and War of Kings. Um, or maybe it's War of Kings, Realm of Kings. I forget which order it is. And uh, then right into the bitter end of the Thanos Imperative. And uh, if you haven't figured it out yet, there's going to be lots of spoilers here. Um, with the Thanos Imperative, he helped kill Thanos. You know? A uh, job that we all thought was just for Drax the Destroyer. Um, you know, locking himself, Thanos, and Star-Lord in the Cancerverse. And uh, as it implodes around him. So, uh, you know, if you think about it, I mean, Nova's got... Especially for most of the story before the Nova Corps came back, Nova had the power of the entire Nova Corps within him, which is like Hal Jordan having the entire power of the Green Lantern Corps within him. Well, he never did. It was you. You could really compare it to Kyle Rayner um, when he was Ion, mm -hmm. how he had the power of he had the the pretty much the avatar of the Green Lantern Corps, which is the power in him. So he so yeah. Or Hal Jordan is Parallax. Or Hal Jordan is Parallax. Yeah, so I mean, uh, you know, he had basically, and the world mind told him it would probably kill him, especially, quote-unquote, just being a, a human, uh, which always seems to be, like, what happens whenever the humans go into outer space. Oh, you're just a human. Um, and yeah, they, they always, always, they always know, win. They're always the most. Yeah, so uh, it's kind of funny how that works out. But, you know... Rich did a lot. Uh, he does not deserve the fate he was given. Um, you know, if they were going to leave Thanos and Star Lord dead, then you know, fine. But you know, I, I think we've had this discussion so many times. I don't want to have it again. Um, but you know, Rich Rider, Marvel did a lot with him. So to leave him kind of hanging like they are right now, I don't buy it. He's coming back. He's going to come back with a vengeance. And, uh, you know, there can be Rich Ryder and Sam Alexander. I, I don't see why there couldn't be, you know. So, um, there we go. My number nine is uh, Rich Ryder. Um, number eight, what do you got? Number eight, I've got Juggernaut. Um, he's pretty much unstoppable as you can, as can be. He's what, he's got the power of Sidorak. And he's just, you know, he's got the armor and everything and, He's kind of unstoppable. Um, now, granted, you know, certain characters have, you know, defeated him. Um, his weakest link is obviously getting taken out by a telepath, but it's kind of hard to do when he's got the helmet on. Um, but there, if he actually tapped into the full power of Sidorak, like we've seen with Colossus when he took over the power, um, he's pretty much unstoppable. And he's, he's got, like, he's harnessing God powers through a human body. So, he's a very tough character to, to defeat. So, that's where, where I'm going with this. Okay. Oh, oh, Plus, so uh, he Robin says, I'm the juggernaut, Avengers bitch. My phone What's up with that? We had this conversation yeah. before. It wasn't really him. It was another v YouTube video that I somebody did a voiceover. Of. However, he should have said that. I agree. So, uh... 
Next up for me at number eight, we have uh, Sentry is who I'm going with. Um, you know, Sentry is basically, I, I, you know what, we'll say Sentry slash Hyperion. You know, basically the two characters that have been at, at various points uh, Marvel's Superman. You know, very, very much so uh, two characters that came in. You know, I don't know as much about Hyperion. I just know that every time I call the Sentry Marvel Superman, somebody goes, no, that's Hyperion. Well, really, it's both of them. And Hyperion's been around longer, but Sentry was literally created in, like, 2000 to be basically Superman in the Marvel Universe. Um, You know, at the end of Dark Reign... Uh, he literally ripped Ares in half in front of his brother. Um, you know, ripped him in half. Like, insane. Um, he's got the power of the sun, I believe. He's got, like, the power of a million exploding suns. Yeah, is what so... they say. And he's also, well, I mean, he's got he's got a split personality. Yeah. I mean, you've got Sentry, and then you've got the Void, where it's a very dark persona. And, um... That's he kind of keeps him tries to keep him at bay, but I mean he's got like two very distinct power sets just off of that, um, and you know that 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 alone is probably a little bit more powerful than Superman. But where Hyperion comes in, he's literally just a copy of Superman. Um, you look at him; he's got the big muscles, he's got the cape, he's got the an iconic kind of symbol on his chest. He shoots laser beams from his eyes. He flies. All that shit. So he's literally a copy you know, of I'm Superman. Capable of multitasking. But Sentry was a little bit more, which is, makes him a little bit better. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> as far as Hyperion goes, like I said, I don't really know enough about him. Uh, he seems to be, uh, you know, coming back lately. Um, I accomplished nothing like So, this. you know, it's... Uh, I know that he's got a lot of the same kind of attributes, if you will. Um, one other thing about Sentry, though, is... You know, he has come out as late, you know, with the newest storyline uh, through Infinity, um, or maybe it was just before Infinity. Uh, he was brought back uh, by the um, Apocalypse Twins as one of their new horsemen of death. I believe uh, it was him, like Banshee, yeah. Dokken, yeah, and the Grim Reaper. And I believe we found out that they were all the horsemen of death. Yes, they just, they used uh, Death Seeds. And resurrected the um, four characters as four horsemen. Yeah. So, I mean, hey, uh, the Sentry is definitely uh, one of the most powerful characters in the Marvel Universe. I think he's obviously dead now, but um, I, I have a feeling he's one of those characters that will stay dead you know, for a little while anyway. Uh, unless they can find a way to, unless they find a way or a reason to bring it back. Yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, but that's uh, number eight. So what, what do you got at number seven? Number seven, I'm going to go with Hulk. And uh, Red Hole. Pretty much, they're kind of the same. You know, power base. Um, you know, Hulk gets stronger every time he gets angry. Uh, Red Hulk gets hotter, so he can pretty much burn you um, the more he gets angry. You know, they're, some of the, they're probably one of the strongest and almost, almost invulnerable um, characters we have out there. And um, another toughie to defeat, but... You know, he can't be defeated. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously Hulk we all know as being, you know, strong as there is and all that good stuff. Uh, is, that, is that what he says? Yes. Hulk the best there is? Hulk stronger, strongest there is. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I honestly, uh, I'm surprised a little higher on your list, but I know you have your reasons, and uh, we'll get basically game them, so... Um, we'll understand why when you get a little bit further up on your list. Um, what I'll say for my number seven, I am going with Black Bolt. And, you know, I, I really kind of thought long and hard about this. Um, Black Bolt's a character I like a lot, and I came to like because of all the Nor- uh, Nova stories. Um, but, you know, it's not necessarily, I guess, the most popular choice to have on a list like this. But if you think about it, this guy can destroy cities with a whisper. I mean, heaven forbid he yells. I mean, he's probably destroying worlds. Um, he does have you know, lots of other powers um, where he's able to, you know, manipulate energy and, and stuff like that. 
Um, he is a, uh, a very, um, you know, he has that mo molecular manipulation. He, he's just a very powerful character. Um, I think about the, the thing that probably keeps him back a little bit is he's kind of a bitch in a way. Um, he's kind of a, a punk. Um, you know, not punk, but he, he's definitely a little bit of a wuss. Like, I think back, I, I mentioned that he died during, um, during, I think it was either Realm of Kings or War of Kings. Um, you know, here's a guy who, who killed Vulcan, um, very controversially. Uh, but on top of that, you know, when he, um, when he, who were they fighting? They were fighting the Sphinx? King Sphinx. King Sphinx or something like that. It was him and Reed Richards and... Darkhawk. And Darkhawk Nova. wasn't supposed to be there, but he was there. Wait, 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 wait. And then there was How Nova. And, um, you know, he happens to go and see, like, a gravestone. Um, I don't know if it was for him or his wife. And whoever he was fighting, he just, like, let them kill him. Which I never really understood. But, you know, on top of that, if you look at the, the recent Infinity storyline, um, he he was, uh, he basically evacuated the Inhumans, like, city that was uh, hovering over Manhattan or New York. And he, it's just basically him there. And he unleashes a Terrigen bomb, but lets himself basically be taken captive by Thanos. And I don't really understand. He yells at Thanos. Like, he does everything he can to, like, you know, take Thanos out. But, like, in the end, I guess we have, like, these two superpowers going at each other. Somebody's got to win. And in that case, it was Thanos. I mean, those two situations right there kind of almost made me leave him off the list. Because, you know, I don't know the first one where you let yourself get killed, I just, because you're just standing there in shock. I don't know about that one, but... You know, he does have the powers. Uh, he is definitely, um, you know, a very, very strong person. Um, you know, he basically helped the Inhumans, um, you know, take over, you know, the, the space entities. Uh, you know, the Shi'ar, the Kree, the Skrull, uh, all those different, um, you know, empires out there. He kind of was able to unite them all and conquer them all as kind of like the figurehead leader of them all, essentially. He wasn't really the leader of them all, but like he was the feared one of the group. And that's a group that included Ronan the Accuser and Gladiator and Lalandra and before the Gladiator and um, obviously the King of the Scroll and all that. So uh, I think he's a pretty, pretty tough guy. How do, how do you think he... How, how do you think he... You know, how what kind of damage do you think he could do after you would have a lot of mixed with food? Very gassy. Man, if his if his whispers take out a uh, city, I don't want to know what his parts can do. Or burp. Yeah, I guess that's that's true as well. So that's our number seven. Uh, number six, what you got? Uh, number six, I'm gonna go with. Well, looks like we're kind of kind of agreement on who our number six is. Um, we kind of share the same character, so I'm going to go with Thor and Better Ray Bill. Yeah, and I went with uh, Odin. I, honestly, like, when we did this originally, I went with Odin, and we talked about it, and he kind of was like, well, you know, Thor is pretty pretty strong and powerful, and, you know, Beta Ray Bill is up there, and then we decided Loki, so we're calling this our Asgardian pack. Um, you know, and even Hela, I guess, or... Hela, is she... She's got a totally different set. Is she the queen? Hela is the... Or is that Lord Figga? Of... Hmm? Who, who's uh, Odin's wife? Figga or Hela? Uh, Odin's wife was... Fri Frigga, I think. Yeah, alright, all right, so my bad. Hel Hela was, uh, is the lord of the underworld. Alright, never mind. We're leaving Hela out of this. Um, so yeah, Thor, Odin, Beta Ray Bill... Loki. And Loki... You know, those those five are kind of like the main ones. You know, Beta Ray Bill essentially... That's four. Uh, to, is it four? Yeah, I guess it's Here four. I come. And I can't do math? Uh, yeah, so... Um, you know, here's my thing with Odin. The reason why I went with Odin and later added Thor and Loki is... You know, Odin is the father, y'all father. Um, 
you know, he's the one that gave Thor his power. Uh, he's basically the one that, you know... He's taking it away. Yeah, he's taking it away. I mean, he is the one, and that's kind of what made me put him on top. But then you look at a guy like Thor and just all the people that he's battled, all the people he's defeated. Um, it's pretty hard to leave him off the list altogether. Um, the Loki, however, how he's, however he's not Odin's true son, he is pretty powerful for being a Frost Giant's kid. Yeah, and he's definitely got lots of powers, uh, God of Mischief. Um, he has basically brought the Marvel Universe to its knees on many occasions. Um, so it's pretty tough not to uh, have him on the list either. And I guess Beta Ray Bill is just kind of... At the time, he was like one of the first characters, I believe, that was able to pick up Thor's hammer. Right. You know, he was an alien who came in and whooped Thor's ass and, you know, uh, and then picks up his hammer to go, def you know, beat him with it and then realize, you know, he's not really the bad guy. <laughs> so that he's a very powerful guy. Um, in fact, um, the, the Ragnarok story from when they did Avengers Disassembled, right. uh, Better Ray Bill came in and defeated the Fedris Wolf, which Thor was supposed to defeat. Um, and he's just like tapped him with his hammer and like next thing, you, next thing you know you saw a bunch of bones what's his hammer Stormbringer uh, Stormbreaker Stormbreaker gotcha so we got Mjolnir and Stormbreaker um, so yeah um, that would be our number six uh, for number five uh, I'm going to go first and I'm going to say this is where I had Hulk and I guess uh, by de facto you know Red Hulk um, for all the same reasons Eric said, I just kind of rated him a little bit higher, and uh, you know that's me. So I mean, he can't. He is pretty powerful. I mean, if you read World War Hulk, you can see what kind of damage he can do. You know, that's like a very big storyline. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Hulk is definitely. Uh, you know, when you think about it, he is. And a lot of times, you know, he'll be number one on these lists. Um, so I got him at five, and what do you got for five? Number five, I got, um, Thanos. Okay. Um, you know, he's, you know, for outer space, he's, like, the big bad guy. I hear once um, you go Black Panther, infatuated with death. Back. All he wants is, he, he, he wants to, he wants to be with death. You know, she, well, when she's not showing her skull face, she is a pretty, you know, pretty hottie. Um, but Some of these are you know, in court, you know obviously, in order to get her, he he's tries to kill everything. So he's literally trying to destroy the universe to get her to love, you know, fall in love with him. And um, you know, especially when he's got the Infinity Gauntlet, he's pretty much unstoppable. You know, because of all the, the the gems that he has, and um, you know, he's got a lot of big storylines. Currently, he's currently uh, in the current storyline with the Marvel Universe. And then he's rumored to be in the new Avengers coming up, or they're they're building towards him. Right. So um, he's a pretty big character right now. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna definitely have uh, more in regards to Thanos a little bit. He is in my list uh, a little bit higher. So uh, moving on to number four, uh, who you got? Uh, number four, uh, I'm going with Apocalypse. Okay. Uh, mainly because he. He is, he's all about survival of the fittest, and he, um, you know, he's all about killing humans. He's all about the strongest mutants out there, and with the Age of Apocalypse storyline, he did it. He brought the world to its knees. He had killed billions. He had, he had done what Hitler so couldn't do. He had committed metal, mass huh? genocide in, the, you, know, you know, the billions with the humans, and... He's a twisted guy. He's he will, you know. He's all about um, the four horsemen, bringing them out to uh, you know ravage the world yet. with. He created one of my favorite characters, which was Archangel, um, as as death. He made Hulk as uh, War. He made Wolverine as death. He's done. He can do a lot, you know. So he's a pretty pretty tough baddie. Oh, on. Yeah, he's one of those guys that I had a really hard time leaving off my list. Um, I really wanted him to be on there, but uh, 
you know, I guess I had, I had to find a way to put Deadpool on my list. So there we go. Um, so that's number four for me at number four. Uh, I'm going with a character that is probably the least known on the list, but, uh, was a pretty, um, you know, massive part of a huge storyline that is near and dear to my heart. And, uh, that is Nihilus. Um, Nihilus is just, uh, I don't really know exactly how to, uh, you know, describe him, but he's, he's started with the Fantastic Four. Um, he's basically rules the uh, like negative me. zone, I guess. Um, and he's on many occasions uh, been able to escape the negative zone. And uh, he tries to wipe out the galaxy. Um, he just is... He gets these, uh, these swarms of uh, insects and they just swarm these worlds and literally just eat them to death and they just are destroyed. Uh, it's pretty insane. Uh, he's got the superhuman strength and flight, and uh, he, he actually controls the Cosmic Rod, uh, which makes him really, really tough. Um, so, and the crazy thing about him is uh, he doesn't age either. So, yeah, and, and he's always reborn. Uh, so, like, he, he just lingers and lasts forever, which is why he, like, never seems to die. Um, so... The one thing about him, you know, he was a part of a lot of different storylines, you know, um, you know, he was even involved with Age of Apocalypse, wasn't he? Um, not that I know of, I mean, I, he wasn't, didn't seem like any integral, integral part that I had seen, maybe, um, with the recent Age of Apocalypse series they just did, gotcha. he was probably part of that, but in the original storyline... Uh, I, I never really heard of a mention of him. Yeah, well, I can tell you he was definitely involved with uh, the, the recent Annihilation. Um, and that's where he was actually killed by Nova. Um, and then when you think about when, um, you know, Johnny Storm, uh, quote-unquote, died, uh, got left in the, uh, the negative zone, um, that's who was sitting there waiting for him was Annihilus, so... Um, he's been a big Fantastic Four, you know, enemy for a long time. And, uh, you know, one of the weird things, though, is during the Infinity storyline, he was actually, like, a part of the Galactic Council. And he was part of the group that was trying to save the universe, which I, I really didn't understand. And that was one of the things about Infinity that I had a hard time with, was it was just so all over the place. But, um, you know, Annihilus has definitely been... Uh, you know, involved in some pretty big storylines, and uh, he's pretty tough to take down because of everything that comes with him in the negative zone. So uh, that's my number four. Who you got number three, man? Uh, number three, I'm gonna go with uh, Silver Surfer. Um, he's, his college's powers make it, you know, give him power rating, you know, off the charts. He's Works for one of the biggest bad guys out there, with, you know, for Galactus. Um, he's pretty much the one guy that goes toe to toe with Thanos, and you know, doesn't comes off with just a flesh wound. And um, you know, I, I, I know, I know he's he's just you know an insanely powerful character. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about him a little bit more in a little bit because he's uh, somehow on my list as well. Uh, number three for me is a character who I know you have higher on your list. I don't mean to spoil, but um, the reason why I only have a number three when I know he theoretically could be the number one is because he hasn't done enough yet. I'm kind of like talking about, you know, for me, it's kind of like this is who he can be. Um, and I'm going with Franklin Richards. Um, who essentially, he's the son of uh, Reed, Reed Richards and Sue Storm, um, and he's got it all. I mean, he literally, ha you know, he's a mutant because of, you know, his parents, and he is just, he has a lot of power. Um, I'm going to let Eric talk more about him in a little bit, but for now, he's my number three on the list, and uh, we'll expand on that in a bit. 
Uh, let's go on to number two, and who do you have? Number two, I have Jean Grey slash Phoenix. Um, Jean Grey is one of, is probably the most powerful telepath in the Marvel Universe, and then you throw in the Phoenix Force on her, and she's unstoppable. The Phoenix Force is known for going through the universes and just destroying everything. Um, of course, it latches onto a human and conveniently can't destroy Earth. <laughs> Um, you know, like I said, it takes it took a very powerful telepath, and granted, she had to sacrifice herself in order to, you know, get rid of the phoenix. In you know, the, although it comes back in various carnations, but um, she's pretty much a very powerful character. Like I said, Silver Surfer quivers in his little non-existent boots when he sees the phoenix. That's funny. Uh, for number two, uh, I have a character Eric already talked a little bit about that I'll talk about a little bit more, and uh, that is Thanos. Uh, Thanos is, as far as I'm concerned, the quintessential bad guy of the, uh, the Marvel Universe. Um, you know, he's on, always after the Infinity Gauntlet. He's always after death. Uh, if you read Thanos Rising, uh, which is kind of his backstory, you understand you know, how he got to be who he is. And how he basically does everything looking for death's acceptance. Uh, he fell in love once with, uh, with a girl and she ended up being death herself. And uh, he's always causing death just seeking her approval. Um, so he's had the Infinity Gauntlet as we discussed. And that made him just ridiculous. Um, you know, he was just involved in this latest Infinity uh storyline which man I, I've read it and I need to read it again it's, it's a lot to take in um, he, he does get kind of taken out at the end I don't want to spoil, spoil that storyline too much uh, because it is still pretty recent and it's it's not unreasonable to think people are still trying to you know read it but um, I can tell you unequivocally Thanos has done enough to, uh, to definitely be considered uh, pretty up there as far as bad guys in the Marvel Universe goes. So that's my number two. And that brings us to our number ones. And I think everybody should, if you paid enough attention, should know who Eric's going with as number one. Uh, number one, I'm going to go with myself. <laughs> because pretty much I could do whatever I want in the Marvel Universe. Um, no, actually, I'm going to go with Franklin Richards. Um, like, like we said, he's a, a mutant. Um, that was born out of, you know, from the cosmic powers that his parents have. And um, he's listed as an Omega level mutant. The reason why I say that is um, he can pretty much alter reality. He can create universes. He's like a little god almost. Um, we've seen this before with the uh, Heroes Reborn storyline in the mid 90s where he saved the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, and from being killed, he kind of put him in a pocket universe, which for one year pretty much did retellings of the entire, of all, you know, you had retellings of Iron Man, Captain America, Fantastic Four, and the Avengers, and they had great artwork at the same time, by the way. Um, but, you know, he's, he was just a little six, to, between six and eight-year-old boy at the time, and he was able to do that. Just imagine what he, what the power he could have when he becomes an adult. Um, I put him at number one mainly because of his potential and his future. Um, he, he's, he's got the power to be the most uh, powerful character. You know, he uh, pretty much may be more powerful than the one above all that you mentioned. You know, um, so I put him down for his future. Yeah, so that was... Part of uh, part of the reason why I I didn't have him higher is because you gotta you have to kind of project where he's gonna be. Um, I mean, he's already done enough to really be considered that. And I mean, when you can alter reality, you know, aka like the Scarlet Witch did during uh, House of M, um, you know, stuff like that is really just insane. Um, <coughs> but uh, you know, he hasn't done enough yet for me to get him up that high. So I'm sure he will. Uh, so we'll see about that. Uh, my number one is going to be a combo package. Uh, it's somebody Eric already mentioned um, uh, just a few picks ago. Uh, 
Uh, you can't have one without the other as far as I'm concerned. And I'm going with Galactus and the Silver Surfer. Um, or I guess you could say any of the Heralds of Galactus. Uh, you know, I know that kind of breaks protocol from what I said earlier on. Um, you know, where we're trying to leave off Celestials uh, because Galactus is a Celestial. Um, but he is pretty much the Celestial of Celestials. He is the world eater. He eats worlds. Like, literally eats them like they're cake muffins. I'd say they'd be like giant jawbreakers. Giant jawbreakers that don't break his jaw. Because he's got a cosmic jaw. Because he gets hungry and he wants to eat more. So, uh, yeah, and, and you know, Silver Surfer obviously is the most known of his heralds and uh, has just so much power between the two of them. Um, I don't really think it's hard to dispute that these are the, the two, you know, together the most powerful uh, character slash characters in the universe. Um, well, as, as, a, as a combo, yes, like but um, like in my opinion, I left I left Galactus off the list because Surfer has the power to destroy the Galactus. Right. You know, so that's why I made him a little bit more powerful. Um, but I mean, yeah. He, Yet he still lives in fear of Galactus. Yeah, because Galactus created him. Yeah. But it was, you know, Galactus also... It like made him the one herald that has free will. Yeah. You know, he's got you got Terax, you got a Fire Lord, um, and uh, Airwalker. You got so many different heralds. Yet they've always stayed heralds. They've always been obedient to him. Surfer is the one that's like, screw you, bitch. Yeah. And then left, but then came back and then left. You know, they have a they have a very on off relationship it's weird <laughs> so yeah that's number one on my list uh, galactus and the silver surfer um now that the audio is fixed i hope you guys enjoyed uh we recorded this without gameplay uh so i'm gonna put some gameplay together to put with it um let us know if you want who are your top 10 and uh that's uh pretty much it uh, happy day after your birthday thank you yeah yesterday was your birthday and uh, when we made the video originally, it was his birthday, and I ended it with happy birthday. So uh, might as well do the same. Um, thank you to Robot Killer V2. I should have mentioned you earlier in the video. Uh, this was his recommendation, and I thought it was a pretty pretty big list. So uh, we did it. We wanted. We definitely wanted to make sure we fixed the audio. So uh, it was a hard list. It was a hard list. It is. You know, there's a lot of characters that the argument could be made for, and. Thanks you know, a lot. You made, you made my brain hurt. <laughs> so, uh, in any event, thanks again, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and we will catch everybody later. See ya.